discuss with you is on the topic of matter. Right. Now, what is the learning objective for topic of matter? Uh, first, you must be able to state that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Now, these learning objectives, all right, it is not, uh, you know, I did not create my own or I did not, you know, get it from any assessment book, but it is from the latest uh, PSLE uh, science syllabus itself. Okay, I have taken directly from there. So it will not be something extra or something, you know, a shortage. It will be exactly what is required uh, for you so that you'll be able able to do well in your PSLE science. Secondly, you must be able to differentiate the three states of matter, which is solid, liquid, and gas, in terms of shape and volume. And then you must be able to measure mass and volume using appropriate apparatus. Okay, so we will, this is the lesson objective. Now, what is matter? How can I tell if something is matter? Very important. First of all, you need to know what exactly is matter. And many students, they confuse with energy. Right? Now, matter is anything that has mass and occupy space. So, example of light. Is light a matter? No, right? Light would not be classified as a matter because why? It has no mass and it does not occupy space. So matter is anything that has number two, it occupies space. Okay, remember that. Now, what is mass? All objects have mass. Okay, all object has mass. And how can you compare or measure mass? You can use a balance to compare the masses of two objects. The objects with the bigger mass will tilt the lever downwards. So take for example here the plastic block and the concrete brick. Okay, so you can see the lever is tilted downwards towards the concrete brick, and you can conclude that the mass of the concrete brick is heavier than the plastic block. Okay. Next, all objects take up space. All objects take up space. So what is exactly space? What do we mean by take up space? So the amount of space taken up by an object is its volume. Okay, the amount of space taken up by an object is its volume. For example, let's take a look at the example of this plastic block and concrete again. Now, which has a bigger volume, the concrete brick or the plastic block? We can conclude that the plastic block has a bigger volume. Why? Because it takes up more space. You can see here, the volume is bigger, right? Because why? It takes up more space. Okay. Now, what are the states of matter? There are three states of matter. Number one, solid. Number two, liquid. And number three, gas. Solid, liquid, and gas. These are the three states of matter. Let's take an example of water. All of us, all of you are familiar with water, right? So water can exist in three states. Number one, solid state, ice, right? So if you buy uh, a drink, say a Coca-Cola with ice, so the ice is in the solid state, water in the solid state, and you can have water in liquid state, and you can have water in the gaseous state. This is the gaseous state or the gas state. Uh, some students are confused. Uh, they say, that, oh, water vapor. From the word water, it must be in liquid state. No, uh, water vapor is in the gaseous state. Okay, very simple. Three states of matter. So three states of uh, water, solid, liquid, and, and gas. So what are the characteristics of the solid state of matter? Now let's focus on solid. What can you tell about the shape of the pebble in each of this container? So the shape of the pebble remains the same, 
even when the shape of the container is different. So you can take a look here at this pebble. Okay, so if you put the pebble in this container, okay, the shape of the pebble remains the same. If you take out the same pebble and you put on another container of a different shape, it does not change the shape of the pebble. So you, you have to say that the solid state of matter has a definite shape. Okay, the solid state of matter has a definite shape. It means that the shape doesn't change even when you put in any kind of container. Right? <clears throat> now, what can you tell about the volume of the pebble as it is being pressed? Okay, since pebble is a solid, the volume of the pebbles, even when it is being pressed. So when you see the you press this pebble very hard the volume remains the same. Thus, the solid state of matter has a definite volume. What does it mean? It also means that it cannot be compressed. It cannot be compressed. Okay? Now, let's move on to liquid. What are the characteristics of the liquid state of water? Now, let's take a look at this simple experiment. What do you observe about the shape of the colored water in each container? The colored water takes on the shape of the container. It does not have its own shape. So you can see here, this colored water, when you put in this first cup, it takes up the shape of the, the first cup. But when you pour the same colored water into a different cup, it will also take up the shape of the, of the second cup. So what can we say about the property of liquid? The property of liquid has no definite shape. Okay? Liquid has no definite shape. Very good. Now let's take a look at this. Eh? So there is 20 ml of juice in a measuring cup. Okay? So 20, 200 ml of juice. So you can see here. So the juice is poured from one measuring cup into the other and the volume of juice is still the same at 200 milliliters. Okay, so from this container, it is 200 milliliters and then pour into this bigger container, it is also 200 milliliters. So you can see here that the volume of the juice does not change even if the container is changed. So what can we say about the property of liquid? So liquid has a definite volume. Okay, liquid has a definite volume. Okay, no matter what container you put in, okay, the volume of the liquid remains the same. Right? So let's take a look at the syringe example. Huh? So the same colored water, if you put it in into a syringe, huh? right? So some colored water is drawn into a syringe, and the nozzle of the syringe is placed against the palm and the plunger is pushed in. However, you cannot push the plunger in, right? What's the reason so? Because the volume of the colored water remains the same, right? So you can conclude that liquid cannot be compressed. Okay, how hard you try to push the plunger in, okay, the, it cannot be pushed in further. Reason being, liquid cannot be compressed. Now let's take a look at gas. What are the properties of gas? What is the characteristics of gas in the state of matter? So you can see here these balloons. These balloons are filled with gas. These balloons are filled with equal amounts of air. Equal amount of air. Now what do you notice about the shape of the air in these balloons? See, the shape is different even though we put in equal amounts of air. So you can see here this balloon heart shape. Okay, this balloon irregular shape. Okay, this balloon okay, in an oval shape. So what can you conclude here? It states that the air takes up the shape of its container. Okay? Air does not have a shape of its own. Thus, gaseous state of matter has no definite shape. Okay? The gaseous state of matter has no definite shape. Now let's take a look at this simple uh, experiment using the plunger and the syringe. So 5 ml of air is drawn into a syringe. 
Okay, fire melt of air. The nozzle of the syringe is placed against the palm. Okay, placed against the palm here. And the plunger of the syringe is pushed, is pushed in. Eh? You push the plunger in. So what do you observe about the volume of air in the syringe? So initially, the volume is 5 ml. So once you push the plunger in, the volume decreases to 2 ml. Right? So air does not have a fixed volume. Air fills up the shape of its container and takes on the volume of its container. And also, the volume of the air in the syringe becomes smaller when the plunger is pushed in. So what can we say about air, properties of air? It shows that gas does not have a definite volume. Okay, gas does not have a definite volume. Pressing on a gas can reduce its volume. And this shows that a gas can be compressed. Okay, unlike solid and liquid, solid and liquid cannot be compressed, but gas can be compressed. Solid and liquid has a definite volume, but a gas has no definite volume. Okay? Now let's take a look at this drawing. Eh? For you to be able to understand what is air, solid, liquid, and gas made up of. So you can see here, in solid, if you look under a very, very strong uh, microscope, you can see that the particles of solid are very closely and tightly okay, uh, close to each other. Okay, that is one of the reasons why solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. Okay, and it does not take up the shape of the container. But liquid, you can see that even though the particles are close to each other, but they are not rigid, they are free to move about. So that's the reason why liquid takes up the shape of its container. But if you look at the particles in gas, you can see that the particles are far from each other. Okay, it is floating around and far from each other. So that is why it does not take up the shape of the container. It takes up the shape of the container. It has no definite volume and no definite shape, and air can be compressed. Okay? All right. Now let's summarize what we have learned today under the topic of matter. First, we know that matter has mass, matter has volume, and matter occurs in three states. Okay? What do we mean by mass? Is the amount of matter an object has. What do we mean by volume? The amount of space an object occupies. And what are the three states of matter? Solid, liquid, and gas. Okay? And what are the properties of solid? Very important. Number one, solid has a definite shape. It has a definite volume. And solid cannot be compressed. For liquid, liquid has no definite shape okay because it takes up the shape of its container however just like solid it has a definite volume and it cannot be compressed okay liquid cannot be compressed what about gas a gas has no definite shape it takes up the shape of its container it has no definite volume okay and it can be compressed and it can be compressed Okay. All right. Now, any questions? Okay. I've come to the end of uh, the concepts of matter, the important concepts. Now, anyone have questions with regards to what we have learned uh, just now? Okay. Before I move on to the next topic of line. Okay. Uh, Daniel asked a very good question. What is the difference between mass and weight? Eh? So mass is the amount of matter in a substance, okay? But weight is the pull of gravity, okay? Weight is the pull of gravity. So you, it is not really in the, you know, in the PSLE, okay, uh, required that you know what is weight. Usually we use the term mass, okay? Usually we use the term mass. Weight is different in, uh, in, on Earth as well as in the Moon. In the moon, your weight will be lighter because the pull of gravity or the gravitational force in, in the moon is lesser than on Earth. 
Okay, Trey P asks a very good question. Is sponge a solid, liquid, or gas? Now, what do you think? Uh, it looks, to some of you, it may sound like a silly question, but uh, I've tested my students, and some students say that a sponge is a liquid, and some students say sponge is a solid. Why? You all know why? Because uh, since solid has a, a definite shape, and why is it possible that you can put a, or you can squeeze a sponge inside a small a cup, for example, or a small container? So they say that, oh, because you can squeeze into another container, so it means that a sponge has no definite shape, so it is a liquid. It is not a solid. So not true. Eh? A sponge is a solid. Why? Why is it you can squeeze it into other or different containers? The reason being it has small pockets of air it has holes that contains air so once you try to squeeze the sponge into different containers the air will escape or the air will be compressed it is not that sponge is a liquid okay 